Too Far was a simple yet elegantly crafted episode. I can't decide whether I enjoyed this episode or Back to the Barn more, they were both great. Back to the Barn dealt with Peridot attaining begrudging respect, and now in Too Far, Peridot gains desire to understand. While both episodes were about Peridot's interactions with specific characters, these new thoughts and feelings she is developing also apply toward the Crystal Gems as a group. I am ecstatic at how Peridot's development, the Parademption, has been handled thus far. These are reminiscent of episodes in Avatar where Zuko gains the trust of Aang's group. Many people have been making that comparison. One trait that separates them, however, is that in Avatar, Zuko and one other character would go on a quest independent of the rest of the group, which forced Zuko to have constant one-on-one -on -one interactions based on proximity alone. But in the past two episodes of Steven Universe, the Crystal Gems for the most part have remained in the same vicinity as one another, and at no point has Peridot ended up in complete isolation with just one other character. Peridot's interactions, while still focused around one character at a time, are occurring amidst constant banter and involvement with the rest of the characters. I have huge praise for this approach, as it feels like a much more natural and cohesive way to build synergy in the group as a whole. Don't get me wrong, I love the one-on-one -on -one Zuko episodes, but I'm really glad we aren't merely getting a rehash of that here. What I especially appreciate from the past two episodes is that Steven has had minimal impact on Peridot's shifting character. It's the rest of the Crystal Gems who are making her question her own identity. Steven's initial kindness has allowed for Peridot to be in the situation she is now, but it's the gradually developing rapport between her and the other gems that is starting to break away the rigid identity that homeworld society had led to. I had hoped that Steven's kind and loving nature would not be the primary cause behind Peridot's turnaround, and so far the Crewniverse is doing a phenomenal job of making Peridot's development multifaceted. With just these two episodes, my worries have already been put to rest. So yeah, let's talk about Peridot. Since losing her prosthetics, she has been shown to be naive and ignorant not only in her perspective and ideas, but also in her behavior and mannerisms. She has been depicted like both an animal and a child, and this episode adds further childish behavior in her fervor to be admired by somebody she deems her superior. By her homeworld cast standards, I should mention, which she is still very much invested in. This desire for admiration even results in imitation, where Peridot laughs nearly uncharacteristically at her name for a hammer, which before she had zero desire to do. This episode continues the trend of Peridot being our link to information on Homeworld, since the reason Peridot looks up to Amethyst is because she is of a high-ranking soldier class. We get elaboration on Jasper's line that Amethyst was an overcooked runt, as Amethyst stayed in her hole an extra 500 years and ended up half the size she normally would be. It's interesting that such soldiers get high respect and rank, whereas fusions don't even seem to be viewed as their own individuals. Speaking of fusion, it is confirmed to be viewed solely as a militaristic function back on Homeworld, and Garnet's constant state of fusion puts Peridot on edge. I guess in Peridot's head, it's as if somebody is constantly brandishing a weapon in situations where there's no need for one. This homeworld view can still be called bigotry, but I find it interesting because it can't easily be compared to a real-world analog. Peridot's views on pearls are analogous to racism, but her view on Garnet is not one where she is against the romance between Ruby and Sapphire, but rather Peridot is completely dumbfounded by their desire to remain fused. Of course, this leads to the question of whether Peridot comprehends romance in the first place, and whether homeworld suppresses gems having genuine emotional connections between each other. I have to make the assumption that romantic feelings between gems are highly atypical in homeworld society. Thus, at the most basic level, Peridot does not understand Garnet because she does not even comprehend romantic feelings, and the militaristic application of fusions confounds things even further for her. I find these sorts of fictional constructs really neat, because it's often hard to break out of the societal framework we operate under in real life, even when creating fictional alien worlds that don't function with the same societal constraints that we have. This potential ignorance of romantic feelings on Peridot's part brings me to wondering if perhaps she may start to develop feelings for Amethyst. Now, I'm not one for shipping, and I often do not care who ends up with whom in a story as long as the relationship is interesting and developed well. The reason I'm even bringing this up is because it's directly relevant to Peridot understanding Garnet better, and because the aftermath of Peridot tackling Amethyst was so evocative of the horror tropey anime thing where the protagonist knocks their love interest over and lies on top of them. Even the close-ups on the wide-eyed faces preceding the apology and lunge backward were included. This feels so deliberate that I can't just imagine the scene having no larger significance. 
Without that romance aspect surfacing in the future, Paradox could have just landed on the ground beside Amethyst and nothing would be altered. But for the scene to be staged so specifically like a romance anime trope after Peridot has earlier been shown to not understand Garnet and admire Amethyst, it's hard to draw any other conclusion. Perhaps Peridot's first fusion will be Amethyst rather than Steven. Amethyst has recently had episodes that showed her maturing back during Steven Bomb 3, but this episode shows that her self-centered flaws and lack of empathy for other people still do remain. I'm referring to her laughing at Peridot's take on Garnet. Now at first, I was under the impression that Amethyst was laughing at Peridot's ignorance and that Peridot was the butt of the humor rather than Garnet. The problem is that Amethyst immediately asks Peridot to roast Steven afterward and even gets star-eyed over it. Saying that she quickly transitions to laughing with Peridot after laughing at her is just... It's just not a good interpretation of the scene. Steven has the proper response early into Peridot's ramble on Garnet, but Amethyst's snicker is an indication that she actually finds Peridot's words funny. I'm going to borrow a meme made by Mellow Filmmaker as it does a great job of demonstrating a simplified version of Amethyst's behavior. Basically, she severely lacked self-reflection in this episode, and she never acquired it either. Her feelings were hurt, but we did not receive indication that she considered how laughing behind the backs of others about their potential insecurities was mean on her part. Just like in my review of last episode, this isn't a criticism, I actually derive much enjoyment from seeing character flaws like these emerge now and then. My criticism is related to Amethyst's behavior though because these flaws slightly undermine the message of the episode. Too far has a message of feeling big being not about your actual physical size or rank in society, but rather the quality of the relationships you have. However, Amethyst laughing at others, Garnet specifically, undermines this a little since Amethyst wasn't acting big, so Peridot's realization about how to feel big is a tad awkward when she's apologizing to somebody who was acting small and never realized that she was acting small. While watching the episode for the first time, this went over my head and I thought the ending was amazing and had zero problems. But after sitting down and giving it a little bit of thought, I have to say including Amethyst's flaws in this matter, it did compromise the purity of the message a little bit and thus did weaken the ending a tad for me. Still, this episode was overall a great one.